It's Wes and Ace on the Briscoe yeah. and Big Ace Show. All right, people. V-Styles of your boy Chip, a.k.a. Jungle Rock Jr. be for the future. Let's go, jump. This ain't no lie. That's right. Joke, right. She'll be slot to any boy. What's up, dude? I like that you're... Don't call me, man. It's been, what, like two weeks, I'm thinking? Yeah, it's been a minute, man. How's it going? <laughs> Oh man, it's just been hectic, dude. Finally moved back to my new place, got a condo. So this kind of just, you know, filling it full of artwork and decorating and doing all that nonsense of moving, which is everybody knows when they move, it's like it's fun, but yet on the other hand, it's pain in the ass. One good thing is you get to clean everything and you get to go through all your old stuff and donate it. And then the bad thing is you got to figure out what you're going to do with all the stuff that you have, which for me is a lot. And I got tons of crap. So, yeah, I bet. I mean, you were in a house last time I was there. So, yeah, that's, yeah, I bet you got a lot of stuff going in there. Yeah, man, tons of stuff, you know. But, you know, I like the new place. It's really, uh, the new digs is really look, looking good. You know, it's really, I'm, I'm digging it, man. Very cool, man. Uh, so you've been busy lately working uh, some shows, it looks like. Uh, yeah, man. Did a couple of shows. Got to uh, wrestle a couple of legends. Um, me and Danny Boy, you know, when you guys saw our last video vlog, uh, Puerto Rico, me and Danny are going back to Puerto Rico in like a week and a half from now. Oh, so, we've been, yeah, we've been getting ready for that. And we'll video vlog that whole trip like we did last time and hopefully we'll have it out a lot faster than we did last time because last time we took a lot of time putting it out but we're going to try to do like an episode a day while we're out there we'll be out there for a week so uh should be fun hell yeah dude that's awesome so uh, a lot of things going on in uh, the world of wrestling I yeah, have by the way, my own life going on to talk about that's interesting my life's been nothing but stress and just more stress with work, but other than that, but it's good. It's good, like to be busy, and uh, again, to be. It's nice to be go to work and have something to do, and not just sitting around. So that's also yeah. A plot. Yeah. I'll, I'll gladly take that stress. Like you're saying, like what I've been up to. Like one of my last matches, I uh, I actually got to wrestle Stefan Bonner, and if you guys don't know, he was in the UFC. He was in Bellator. He's done a bunch of, like, I think pride fights in uh, Japan, a bunch of cool stuff. So uh, I got to actually, uh, me and him had a semi main event match. And it went, you know, I would say it went really well, other than that, you know, you would think an MMA fighter wouldn't cheat, but uh, somehow he cheated to get the win, which, you know, I don't know why everybody decides to hit me in the balls. I feel like. I don't know. Maybe it's because I got big balls and they think that's my weakness and they just <laughs> always seem to nail me there. And that's how I get beat most of the time is by people nail me in the balls, which, man, I'm one day want to have kids with staff. So it's like, come on now. You guys got to back it down a little bit. You know, you're kind of hurting the family. You know, she's going to get pissed and you don't want wifey pissed because she'll come down on you. Oh, man. Well, uh, that's what happens when it's too big of a target. So that's a blessing, though, sir, uh, on other days. So enjoy that. <laughs> I got big balls. That should be the quote of the night's episode. I'm telling you right now. If it's not, I will be mad. But, uh, yeah, and you've been busy uh, with some other shows. You So in case uh, most people know, because we've talked about it, but in case anybody doesn't, you do a lot with Atomic Wrestling, and you are currently the Atomic uh, Heavyweight World Champion. Yeah, I like. Um, I also stepped up the role to uh, help produce some of the matches and help. I've been working for them over a year now, and it's a chance for me to make wrestling exciting again. I love coming up with finishes. That's one of the things that I've always been really good at is coming up with finishes of the matches. Like I, I feel like it's like a canvas, and I love painting, and I love helping younger kids and showing them like, oh, if you do this and this this is what will happen. And, then, and you see their eyes light up and they're like, yeah. And then I go out there and actually sit and watch the matches. And when I see the way that the crowd reacts and then they come back and they're like, dude, they did it. The crowd reacted just how I said, I'm like, dude, I've been wrestling a long time now. Trust <laughs> me. I've done stuff that people booed. And I've done stuff that people cheered. 
So I know what works and what doesn't work. And I can feel the crowd. And I've wrestled in almost every country, almost every state, been there, done that. I know what works for different crowds. And I can sit and kind of watch the first match and dictate of what the crowd's going to react to and what they're liking and how to kind of be my, by being a magician and pull the rug underneath their feet. I don't listen to the crowd. I dictate what the crowd's going to do. I dictate whether they cheer or boo. I don't allow them to chair or tell me to do a move. I do everything on my own and I'm the puppet master. They don't control me. Right. I like it. I mean, and that's just that you have gone through quite a bit in your career up till now that you do have a wide knowledge and wisdom and have been on the road that you can definitely, uh, you know, help younger talent which should be the point of anybody who's been down the road quite a bit when they come to a show and there's some fresh talent that should be the point is to pass that wisdom on because at the end of the day you're all trying to make the wrestling business better for the future i mean it was like it's kind of funny like when me and uh stefan bonner were going over a match he kind of like tried to like i wouldn't say big league me but like <laughs> You're like, hey, I don't, and I'm like, first of all, hold up, wait a second, look at this, and then second of all, do you not know I beat the Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle? And I looked at him, I go, are you an Olympic gold medalist? He goes, no. I go, are you a champion of any of the MMA things? No. Then you can't tell me anything because I just beat the Olympic gold medalist in the steel cage match. So if I want to suplex you, guess what? I'm going to suplex you. Finally, he got humbled and realized, you know, hey, and I said, shut up. Let me have a good match. I'll, I'll make this match the best match you've ever had. And guess what? We went out there and stole the show. We had a great show. We had a great match. He listened. It was phenomenal. We threw the MMA and mixed it in between the amateur wrestling. It was actually a really, really good match, a match that I'm proud of. But sometimes you got to tell these guys, hey, like, shut up and listen. You know, like, I hate to be like that. But, like, if a vet came up to me with someone with more experience, I listen. I'll, I'll at least give my ideas. But when someone that has more experience with me in the ring gives me any type of idea, especially that I'm working with, I'm going to make sure that I listen to them and give them the most credit because they've been there. They've done that. They've stepped in that ring. They've led matches. They've seen what works and what doesn't work. And when someone doesn't listen to their vet or thinks that they know it all, that's when you get those matches that don't work together and that kind of just, just I don't know, you can tell that it, it just doesn't work. So someone always has to be a leader and someone always has to take control. Oh, Big Ace, we lost you. I can't hear you, buddy. There we go. All right. Oh, there you Where you went? I don't know. Oh, We're on the Wi-Fi oh. right now. I'm not relying on that cable anymore. So uh, I was on Grant right there. <laughs> and just so you, uh, we, uh, Coach yeah, you one three. Thanks for hanging out with us, and uh, thanks for your opinion on uh, Stephen. <laughs> Bonner. Yeah, hey, who just said what was that that just went across the stream? What's up, boys? Oh, Bonner is a piece of whoa. <laughs> well, I, mean, I want to go as far as saying that, but you know what? He was a good dude. He listened. He had fun, and you know, he just once I once I put him the old school style and said, "Hey, ain't gonna fly because I'll shoot with you or whatever." I just want to have the best match for the people. Right. I want to give the people. I'm not gonna take advantage of no wrestler. Nobody young. I'm going to make the match the best that I can possibly make because I want to steal a show. There's no reason why I don't want everybody cheering my name. And to do that, I have to make my opponent. And to make my opponent, that means that I have to give in. I have to work with them. I have to make sure that I put over what he wants to get over, you know. But then the other hand, when you're with someone experienced with me, Sometimes you just got to shut your mouth and let me lead the match because I'll lead you to gold, baby, all day long. And that's another thing I think some people don't realize and I think sleep on you in the fact that uh, how much you can get the crowd involved in a match. Because uh, that, yeah. 
can be very difficult and you see it where it, it, it doesn't always happen for people, even on the biggest stage, uh, like in the WWE or AEW stage. Uh, I mean, Ace, like you, you've seen me wrestle in farms. You've seen me wrestle in big arenas. You've seen me wrestle all over the place. Do I always get the crowd involved? Do I always get a pop? Always. Whether oh. it's 10 people or 10,000 people, I always, Ace will tell you, I connect with the fans. I, for some reason, I just have this, I don't know, but someone's hitting us up. What was that? Run that back. It's Nick Bischoff, buddy from Atomic Shows. What's up, homie? How you doing? What's going on, Nick? I hope you're doing good, dude. Shout out. What's up, Nick? Right. So, uh, you know, you, you, I, I know you do that a lot too at your indie shows that you do. You, you're not shy to help the younger talent that's there. Is that something you've ever thought about doing, Wes? Like an actual school or helping the school out? I know you are friends with Gangrel. Do you do anything when you're down in his parts as far as training sessions? Do you show up to schools and do some training sessions? No, I do seminars here and there, but mainly no. I just, when I'm at the show, if a kid comes up to me and says, hey, will you watch my match? I'll sit down and actually watch his match and I'll break it down and tell him where he should have put a move and why he should have put a move there. And what's the reason why he got this reaction and why do we want this reaction and why do we take it away from him? You know, I'll, I'll actually break down a match because a lot of guys are too good to just be like, oh, that was a great match, da, da, da. I'll actually sit down and be like, hey, if I was in this scenario, I would switch it up like this and this and this, you know, and that's something that I like. And I don't know if I'll ever be a coach. That's really not something that kind of like I'm into. Like I will coach and I love it, but it's like I love sharing knowledge and I'll share knowledge with anybody. But for right now, I'm not really looking to be a coach. Right on. Well, uh, so – talking about shows and i've been to so i've been to atomic wrestling before with you i was at the last not the very last but the one before that anniversary show and some of the same people were there but yeah and also we have a vlog on this youtube or depending where you're watching youtube channel the briscoe and big ace channel from that weekend where you actually uh which most people don't get to see is, is you giving your speech before that show started to the rest of the talent so if you guys want to see that side and, and see what it's like uh, check out that vlog on our YouTube page. Yeah, I I always like to uh, kind of give a speech, like a war speech, and kind of motivate the troops and kind of tell everybody, hey, you know, this is what I'm happy that you guys are doing. This is what I'm glad. This is what you guys are slacking on. You know, I'm not scared to tell the, tell the world how it is. And, you know, we have a good group of family here in Atomic where we're a close group guys where, you know, I'll tell them where they're messing up, but I'll also tell them, where they're doing good. And I'll tell all the younger wrestlers, hey, this is your chance. This is your opportunity. Because one time we had a girls match and they tore it down the house. So next show, I made them semi-main. And everybody's like, oh, why they're semi-main? I'm like, because the girls tore it down and they earned that right. And we give everybody a chance in Atomic. And if you go out there and steal the show and prove to yourself, we don't care if you're guy, girl, what gender you are. We're going to put you in the spot that you need to be in and shine because we see how hard you're working. We see your value. So I take pride in, you know, help being a manager, help being a promoter, help, you know, just coming up with everything from being an agent to help coming up with the finishes to the script, just to all that. I enjoy that because we have a tight knit family that actually really enjoys professional wrestling and wants to learn that doesn't really care about going out there and getting their shit in yeah and you can tell when you are at an atomic show you can tell by the quality that that the show is i had a blast that whole night uh the show was phenomenal um now let's fast forward ahead um, and start kind of getting into what we were telling that we would actually talk about tonight because obviously it was making the rounds. This I, don't know what, I don't know what we actually talked about because you run my Twitter and Facebook and you run all my accounts. So I really don't know what you're talking about. So maybe you can. Why don't you freshen me up and tell me what happened? Yeah, definitely. We will get, we're going to get into uh, what happened at the very last Atomic Wrestling Anniversary show. Um, same location, Cocoa Beach, same venue that I think it was at last year. Am I correct on that? Yeah, it was actually Atomic versus ECW. 
Oh, very cool. And uh, what's up to our friend Chris? What up, Chris? Yeah, oh. thanks for listening uh, and watching, actually. Right? Yeah, guys. And again, like we explained this on the last episode, we're, we're busy, guys. It's hard to do like a weekly based thing just because oh. we have moving schedules. Um, so the goal is about every two weeks we bring you a brand new episode. But the thing is, we wanna, we can't plan it that far out on what day it's going to be. So you just got to watch our social media for the announcement of show going down tonight. That's how it works. Yes. So kind of guerrilla style. So which is yeah, really like, how we like, yeah. that's how we run it. We run it underground. We're not really trying to be the next David Meltzer or any of that type of stuff. You know, we do it our style and you know, the core group of people that we do, that do listen to us. We appreciate it. And just, for you to share it and say, hey, there's this underground podcast that it's pretty funny, kind of cool to listen to and watch, you know? Nice. All right, of course. Yeah. Okay, and, let's uh, get down to the nitty gritty. Hell yeah. And we've been teasing some guests, so later at the end of this show, we'll get more into that because we're going to start bringing them on too. Uh, yeah. So, Atomic Wrestling Show, this is a week ago now, a week and a half ago? Yeah, I believe so. I was Last week, I was with Dory Funk and Scott Steiner. Oh. We'll have to hear about that later. Um, so, okay, we got the anniversary show. It made the rounds this week. Atomic actually being the ones that like put this out. It didn't seem to like come out through fans or anything. Uh, it was. It seems like this was Atomic that came out with the the story of what happened and the video because that's the other thing. Do you can't deny and you can't lie when there's video proof. Obviously, there was an incident that went down at this show when I was there last year. Sandman was there then. Um, no big issues like what happened this t- time around, but he was there, whatever. We're now, fast forward a year later, he's there. Um, so here, here's what we've all heard online of what was going down, and then we'll we'll talk with you about what really went down that night. You were there, obviously. You're the champ, so I'm sure you're defending uh, with. Sh- Shane Douglas, am I right? Was that the main event? Yeah, me and Shane Douglas, main event. Um, scheduled to go an hour. Wait, you said you guys were scheduled an hour? Yeah. Damn. Dance class. Oh, man, thank you, Nick. We have, dude, I nothing but the kids in love, man. Like, every time I try to find a fan or a young kid, I try to always expire them and always try to give them a time of day. And Everybody knows that. And I thank you and I appreciate that, man. That's nothing about love. Thank you, Nick. We appreciate that. Hell yeah. Thanks for hanging out, Nick. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, you, Shane Douglas, main event. I'm sure it tore the house down. Uh, I don't know. Oh, Stand in ovation, actually. There we go. Um, I don't know if it's up yet, but Atomic does have their own YouTube channel, and they usually throw the matches from the show up there. Don't know if that one's up yet, but I'm sure it will be when it is. We will post it all over, and you should check it out. Um, that's Wes and Shane Douglas. But the story of this whole night that was making its right around on the interwebs this last week is Sandman was there and had a list of just things that went down this night that turned into this incident. So uh, from what, what was released online is uh, he was scheduled. I believe it was either triple threat or four-way match. Um, um, I wasn't his agent and two, I don't, you know me, I don't go on social media. Yeah. So everything you're telling me is firsthand. I guys, I, I hate to say it, but Ace will tell you, I'm not a social media guy. I do not go or like, that's the last thing I'm trying to do. I'm trying right. to build businesses. I'm trying to build an empire here, guys. I don't really go on social media. I do to promote stuff when I'm on, you know, live on our channel, we interact with people. We try to. That's pretty much it. So everything Big Ace is saying right now is firsthand stuff. So what he's saying, I'm listening. Okay, so first thing is, again, triple threat or four-way match, I can't remember. Uh, It was scheduled for 15 minutes is how long it was supposed to go, and it lasted about three minutes. Um, I would have been pissed. Sandman was visibly hammered in the ring. Yeah. Yeah. once this match ended, it seemed like a lot of confusion. And then for whatever reason, uh, Sandman grabs the microphone and proceeds to cut a promo, but also was just kind of like booking a triple threat match with the three guys in the ring to, to the point that, A, you could tell he's drunk. 
uh, slurring, mumbling, making no real sense at some, some points. And then uh, I think it was Shannon Moore was on the outside of the ring and goes in and is like, fine, next show, we'll do that triple threat just to kind of kill it and be done so that everybody can leave the ring. Sandman stayed out there, said some more stuff, something about trying to just get lucky that night. Um, so that's what ha- and there's video of this stuff. So you can watch this back. Atomic released this this last week. It's been going around on the internet, so I'm sure you can find it pretty easily. The other things that were said that happened is back in the backstage area, uh, it was damaging property of the venue. Um, was again just drunk, uh, was sexually harassing the female talent, and also was basically talking uh shit and degrading the rest of the talent for the show to the point that apparently it got close to an actual altercation happening backstage. This is what's all come out. Now this is coming off the heels of like three months ago, guys. Uh, I think it was around three months ago where Jordan uh, grace from impact um, put a thing out. Cause I think she had just won the title or she may have it something to where she put out and said that, oh, weird Sandman. I remember him telling me a year ago or something to that effect that uh, women shouldn't be a main eventing. I think that's what it was, is that women shouldn't be main eventing. Well, sure. he, got, he got in a big thing with Tessa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that she, this is how she got involved with all that because she backed up Jordan. And it turned out like, yeah, people were like, oh, yeah, we all heard this stuff about uh, Sandman saying that. So he was already in heat a few months ago. And then he came out and said, no, no, they just misunderstood me, which, you know, the follow up is every female talent who said they heard him say it. We're like, no, he's still lying. So fast forward to Atomic Wrestling. I think it was the fourth anniversary show. Us? Yes, I believe. Um, yeah. So the fourth anniversary show. And again, all this stuff happens. It gets to the point that almost an altercation between him and talent backstage happens. So that's what's going around on the dirt sheets. That's what's picking up scene. I guess at some point he had gone kind of cleaned up and maybe not was drinking and stuff like that. Uh, that's all fly. But obviously I know I remember seeing him a year ago and he was backstage just drinking a case of beer. Um, so at least for the last year, he has not been sober and clean. Um, yeah, it's never cool when you see people you looked up to go down that road. I agree, Chris. But um, so, yeah, man, you were there. You're the champ. What did you see? What did you hear? Were you around any of this? What do you what is your take on all this? I mean, again, you're the you're the atomic ta- uh, champ. You're your top of the, the list over there. Uh, you're you're a regular for the show. You work with the company. So. Where do you stand on this? And, and then we'll get a little bit more in on just uh, how this kind of actions can affect the, the wrestling business. Well, let's start out. We'll start by one issue at a time. All right. And, yeah, he showed up completely hammered. Like, so bad he was having trouble walking and talking. So, correct on that one. Let's handle issue number two. Issue number two, yes, he was sexually harassing the women, which I heard through multiple people, which I saw online, which multiple women stuck up and said, yeah, he's verbally said some altercations to them. Third, he was supposed to schedule for 15 minutes. I was not the agent of the match, nor did I watch his match because I was too busy doing agenting other matches. He went out there and did three minutes. Unprofessional, we paid him a certain amount of money. We flew him in, got him a hotel. We took care of him. So after all these incidents start coming, I start hearing things. Of course, I'm main event, me and Shane Douglas, and I'm also – an agent, a producer, I help work with the company. I'm the locker room leader. I start hearing things. You know, I kind of start letting them go, letting them go. And it finally gets to the point where he's sitting at the curtain <clears throat> and he's disrespecting every single wrestler that's coming in and out of that curtain. Now, to be clear, you do got you guys bring in big names to Atomic, but there's also a lot of young talent who are trying to make a name on these shows, right? 
Yeah, I mean, we had Justin Incredible, we had Sandman, we had Sabu, of course, we had Shane Douglas, and of course, we have our local, local hardcore guys that stick with us that help build and make our com company where it's at. If you don't have the little guys, your company ain't nothing. You can't just have stars. You got to have... You got to have those opening matches that are fire, not just in any opening matches. You got to have those opening matches that draw people. They go, whoa, okay, this is what we're getting into tonight. I'm ready to watch some wrestling. You know, and that's how we build our card. And for someone of his statue, for him to just, just respect talent, and not only that, it's different if you pull a guy to the side and say, hey, come with me. Let me – tell you what's wrong but just to excuse my language but just to shit on every single wrestler and make every single one of those guys feel like they were nothing and watching them come back and looking at their eyes and tearing up and seeing that their hero is not giving them any advice but yet he's shitting all over them and that's and that's the rough part about hearing this part of that story is the fact that at this time, there are a lot of young up and comers that watched him back in the day. We're looking up to him. That was a man, you know, I mean, that whole era of ECW is legendary times, some amazing wrestling and amazing talent that have all gone on to things after. Sam, yeah. I mean, his thing was then it didn't really go past that. But again, there are people who are huge. Uh, being on the Jericho cruise uh, a month ago, John Moxley in the ring after they were done with the dynamite stuff and just kind of fooling around, came in and brought a kendo sticks in a, in a beer and was like, I've always wanted to do this. It did Sandman thing and then left the ring. Like literally, it was at a two minute thing. He popped in. I just want to do this. Took the mic from the elite guys, did it, then was out. Uh, yeah. You know, then that's, you know, so when these kids are like, oh, he's this guy, man, I can't believe I'm going to be with this guy. And then it just, you know, you get that. That's it, crushing, you know, especially because wrestling fans are passionate. We're, we're very passionate about this. Imagine a younger wrestler and imagine them looking up to him and thinking they're going to get some advice and he just buries them in front of everybody. And just makes the kids where they want to cry, like, and for not even doing anything that's worth that to crush another human being's passion, expire, just dreams, everything, just to crush it. Just it, it was starting to bother me, right? Where it started to finally, I was like. All right. If he keeps saying something, I'm gonna stick up for my family. Right. Stick up for what I was raised, or I'm gonna stick up for what my how my dad raised me. I'm gonna stick up for all the little guys. I'm gonna stick up for everyone that does not have a voice because I ain't scared, you know. <laughs> yeah, and the other thing that maybe some people may not realize about you is you a you're a very caring person to the people surrounding you. Uh, you're also a very emotional person. You know, you do wear your your emotions on your sleeve. You don't hide anything. Um, so, I mean, you have moments of where you can't stop showing what you're feeling. And, you know, not a bad thing. It's awesome that you're like that because that's why people love you. But for someone who cares that much and that much at stake and involved with what's happening and that's what's going on. Yeah, I, I, I must imagine you're getting pretty frustrated to the point that it's like, Okay, what? Wait, 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 wait. You know, and... See, and it, it, it was more than frustrated because I can handle being frustrated. Like, that ain't no thing. Like, right. being frustrated, they, you know, that's, that's every day. I can't deal with bullying, and I can't deal with disrespecting. Bullying is my main thing. And when I see that, it just... My skin boils, everything. I'm just like, what? Why you gotta pick on this person? Like, right? Well, well, what is your motive? Like, these guys have a dream just like you did. Everybody started out just like you did. Why don't you help instead of destroy these people's dreams? What? I I don't understand your motive. And it started getting to the point where he keeps doing it. 
and keeps doing it. And, you know, of course, I'm agent -y. And, of course, he's shitting on, excuse my language, he keeps shitting on every match. Right. And I'm finally just like, okay. And it's a match before, it's, it's a match before semi-main event. Okay. So I have to go main event. So there's there's a match going on, and there's a match after this match. So the match going on, he's just standing in the curtain going, F this, F this guy, F this. I can't believe I'm even here. And finally, it just – it reached the point where I was overseeing the locker room disrespected. Uh -huh. I was over the way he was acting. I was over, we paid him money to get here and this is the way he's acting. Yeah. That's, that's the hard part too. As a businessman, when you expect someone to come in and do a job for you, you want the best job possible. So to hear that they're treating your people like that is, Business wise, that's a big, uh, big no no. Now, before we go further with that, uh, the other claim was damaging the property of the venue. Did you notice any of that or hear about that or see any of that? Zero. Okay. Did not see any of that. I can't say you did or did, did not. And I'm not going to say anything because I did. And you know me, I'm, a, I'm an honest guy. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to make up no lie. So I did not see him damage anything, nor did I hear about him damage. Everything I hear about is what you're talking about, and everything I'm saying is what I said or what I actually witnessed. So I finally got to the point where I was over it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? You don't have to talk to these guys like that. If you really want to help learn, teach these guys, pull them aside and actually help them. Blah, 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 blah. Who are you? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, excuse me? Da, da, da. I'm like, no, F me, that ain't happening. Right. In my room. So I said, if you got a problem, you know what? Let's fight. By this time, the whole locker room starts filling in. I, I can, you know, I'm always, I got, I got, I got that vision. I'm seeing left and right just in case, you know, and I start, you know, Sabu starts filling in, Justin Incredible. Of course, Shane Douglas is there at all the all the local town. They start filling in a circle, and it's me and him. So Sam Man sees this and decides that he's going to pretend that he's back in the ZCW days and try to act Mr. Tough Guy. <laughs> well, which is so far from what he really is at right now. Yeah. So we get to the point where I'm not going to say the language because it's pointless. But basically, we're going back and forth with those languages. And finally, he decides he wants to get nose to nose with me. Which do that, by the way, with, with Wes, if there's something that he's actually emotionally getting into like this, you don't do that. That's poking the bear, by the way, people. I'm sober and about to wrestle. I'm already hyped up, ready to go. All Everything's firing. Every sense is going. I can smell. I can see. I can hear everything. In one twitch moment, I'll knock you out. And the other thing people don't remember is you have a legit background in like kickboxing and stuff, right? Kickboxing. I got two different black belts. I box and I got two different state championships in amateur wrestling. And I've been a surfing with my boy, Mr. Dollywood. Check out his Instagram. But let's get to the point. We get nose to nose and, you know, typically when you get nose to nose with someone, they ain't going to fight you. It's all talk because if you're going to fight someone, like if, if I'm going to fight you, I'm going to hit you. Like I'm not just going to. So he, we get nose to nose. We start talking, start talking, whatever, whatever. I'm, of course, saying, hey, man, you're horrible. You suck. Like, your matches, I've never watched you once, to be honest with you. I can't even tell you one good match you ever had. You're nothing but a gimmick wrestler. You come out with a kendo stick and a beer trying to get a cheap pop. Hooray! I come up there with just tights and nothing and still rock the ring, rock the crowd, rock everybody around. 
That's the difference between you and I. I don't need nothing. I don't need no title. I don't need no Kindle stick. I don't need to come out there with a beer, smoking a cigarette. I don't need that cheap pop because I'm me. I got charisma. So after that, he gets a little angry, gets closer to my face. So I'm like, hey, let's fight. Like, I literally put my hands behind my back and I said, hit me. Do whatever you want. I go, you can fight me here or we can go outside where there's no cameras and I'll make sure the whole locker room stays in there and I'll beat your ass outside or I'll beat your ass in front of the locker room. Either way, I'm going to beat your ass. You ain't getting out of this situation. Then I see him start swaying. I'm like, oh, man, he's he's sweating. I start seeing him turn pale white as a ghost. And I'm looking around, and I'm like, looking at him. I'm like, so what are you going to do? Come on, tough guy. What are you going to do, Mr. Tough Guy? You claim to be this bad dude. I'm right here. I'm ready to go. I'll go, I'll go outside where there's nobody. I'll tell the locker room to stay in there. I ain't going to call the cops. What do you want? Mr. Tough Guy, you, you want to talk all this stuff? Talk bad about the younger talent? Degrade the women? Treat everybody like they're nothing? That you're some type of hero? No, they ain't going to fly with me. Let's do, like, like, I ain't scared of fight. Like, I don't promote fighting, and I'm not, I'm not going to ever, ever say it's good. But I'm going to stick up to bullies. I'm going to knock people out. And I'm not going to put up with stuff like that. Especially, we have a tight family, guys. We have a group of guys that I've watched blossom. I've seen guys get tryouts. I've seen them move past Atomic. I've seen them actually get hired by WWE. So, yeah, I stick up for my boys, you know? And it finally got to the point where this is the funniest thing, Ace. I've never said this in my whole career, which is pretty funny. I looked at I looked at Sam and I said, hey, I said, let's fight or let me go over my match with Shane. What do you want to do? Because I'm down to do whatever you want. And I looked in his eyes. He didn't say nothing. So I said, you know what? I guess I'm going to go over my match because you're up, can't say the word, <laughs> and you don't want to fight me. So I went and talked over my match, and me and Mr. Shane Douglas tore the house down. So there it is, everybody. That's the first account. So um, obviously, uh, when Atomic talked about this, uh, I believe Atomic has their own podcast as well that they're doing. Well, I I, here's the thing, is, Ace, and I told you this from the get-go as soon as it happened. I'm a type of guy that I don't talk on the internet. I ain't no internet keyboard dude. Like, if I got to be with you, I'm going to say it to your face. So I wasn't going to say nothing until something came out online. Because until then, I was just going to, like, keep my mouth shut because – what happened happened, and I'm not trying to brag. I'm not trying to be a tough guy. I'm not trying to promote none of that stuff. All I'm trying to promote is standing up for your locker room, being being a locker room leader, and being a team leader, and not letting people bully you around. And finally, Ace called me and was like, hey, like, it's getting out on the internet. Well, why don't you actually tell your side of the story? And it took me for a while, and I tell, Ace will tell you, like, it took me a minute because – I'm a stand-up dude. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Like, I'm a stand-up guy. Like, I'm no internet guy. I'm not going to talk bad about you behind your back. This is all stuff that I'll say to your face 100%. I've never been that type of guy that will go type up some stuff and, like, no, that ain't me. I'm not going to go blast you on YouTube. I'm not going to go blast you on whatever social media I have. I'm going to say it to your face before I say anything at all. Yeah, it's an old-school mentality. Handle your business. Exactly. So, you know, that's just how I was raised. So, you know, what's done is done and what's happened happened. And, you know, I didn't want to make anything out of it. And, Ace, you know, tell them. I, did I not say it? I yeah. don't want to say anything. Yeah. You know, I mean, you called me uh, after the show, uh, like the next day to be like, dude, I've got to tell you what happened at the show. So we talked about it. And I, I, I wasn't even necessarily like, let's bring it, you know. I'm kind of the same way. If it's not out or you out, we're not in this to break news just to be like, Hey, more, more, more clicks. So like, like you said, if it gets out, we can, we'll, we'll talk about it just cause 
it would be weird not to if it's going on in the news of the wrestling world due to the fact that again you work with them you're the champ at the moment for atomic wrestling you have very deep what you talking about at the moment well i mean you you're gonna be champ i mean that's just uh you know how it's gonna be but um it's uh so yeah we weren't planning on really talking about it and to be honest even going into the show tonight my i was just going to go over what was being released online and then it was on you on what you wanted to talk about uh as far as what you saw and how much you were actually a part of this uh whole incident that happened backstage um you know and again too talking about this because there's that there's that other thing too where i've you know there's that respect uh code of respect for for wrestling the wrestling industry as far as you know the people who are there before you you have to show that respect you don't get out of line with them blah 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 blah. and 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 it's old school and maybe maybe a little outdated on certain aspects but at the end of the day you should always respect the people that came before you in this business but you know so i guess my question would be like how was that received with the rest of the locker room? Were they really happy that you stepped in? Cause it didn't sound like anybody else was planning on doing it. And they're just going to let him do his thing or. Planning to say anything. And it felt really humbling. I got a lot of messages saying, thank you for standing up for us. And I kind of got a little emotional. I was like, man, like, it really meant that much. Like, I probably got seven messages from the boys saying, like, we really appreciate you standing up for us. No one else would. No one else would have. They would. Everyone else would have let that slide. Everybody else would have been like, oh, it's Sandman. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm like, nah. Not in my locker room. Not, not how I was raised. You ain't going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Because if I didn't, excuse me, Ace, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but if I didn't do that, my dad would have whooped my ass. <laughs> yeah, you don't want Papa Briscoe coming at you. So. No, at 74 years old, he'll still whip him for his ass. <laughs> um, but, I mean, the other thing, too, is in this day and age where the industry is as far uh, as far as professional wrestling, especially with women's professional wrestling, there's definitely – no room at all for that kind of behavior anymore. You know, 20, 30 years ago, different story, you know, whatever. But now with how much women's wrestling is in the spotlight and how hard they work to to get to where they are. It don't matter if women are wrestling. It don't matter what they're doing. Don't respect women, period. Right. It don't matter matter if she's working behind the counter at 7-Eleven. It don't matter. I don't care. You do not disrespect women especially in front of me right. i don't care you can doesn't matter about what you do you yeah. do not disrespect women i don't care what you do you don't yeah so i mean that alone justifies someone stepping in even if there's some sort of code of respect from the old school era um but again uh y- people need to be held accountable you know well, let, me, uh, let me let me say something uh you didn't let me finish mr big ace partner in crime um, the vets were sitting right there. His, the guys that he wrestled with, the guys that he sweat, blood, tears, everything that he's done, were sitting right there. And they all came up to me and said, Wes, you did the right thing. And you did. Uh, at the end of the day, I don't think anyone will dispute that. Um, none of that stuff should be going on anywhere uh, to anyone. So, but you know, I'm glad that you you shared it because I, I'm I think people need to see you know how much we really do care about what you're doing and the people around you because uh, it lets people know who West Briscoe really is, um you know because uh, how many times are people just like oh man Ace it's Nate where's the long hair bring bring the vest out let me wear your vest yeah or you know oh are you gonna just go crazy on people now like people don't really realize like, dude, you're just a chill guy. You're super nice. You're kind. You care about the people. You care about things around you that matter. Big way with Hollywood. Yeah. And again, you, you wear your heart on your sleeve. So the people that you do care about friends, family, all that, um, we see, you know, who you really are. And so when this is, you know, this kind of thing's happening to me in my head, I hear it. I'm like, you're like, I stood in and I had to stop it. 
I'm like, yeah, you did. Cause I wouldn't expect nothing less out of you. Um, which is why when this, you know, when you told me about it and then it broke, I was like, well, this is not new on what you want to talk about as far as that incident. But again, I'm glad that you, you uh, went into more detail on it and, uh, you know, hopefully that gives an eye to uh, opening the people of the the softer side of West Briscoe. Softer side, well, yeah. Softer softer side. Side with this hot lady, but um, hot lady. Which yeah. by the way, we gotta also say, you gotta point out that because you're in your new spot now, and that picture of your dog is one of the coolest things I've seen. I thought you were talking about my girlfriend. But yes, my dog. <laughs> Very cool too. Okay. Just about to get super weird right there. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a tank that passed away, man. Um, this famous Japanese uh, amateur wrestler. He actually got, I believe, either sil silver medal or bronze medal for amateur wrestling in the Olympics. Mister Tashihashu Hakata. But uh, he was one of my dad's uh, teammates in college and back when he used to amateur wrestler and he saw pictures of Tank and when Tank passed away, he uh, did this uh, hand-painted mural for him. Hell yeah, no, that thing looks sick. Uh, the water, like the detail in the water and him running through it is just crazy. Thank you, Greg. Hell yeah, buddy. Hopefully I'll be down that to visit again soon. We can all hang out again. He's great, man. He he is the man. Best Thai food. He has the best Thai food hookups in the world. Which, by the way, uh, since our last episode, Mister West Briscoe, you got a year older. Hello. I thought we weren't going to talk about this on this podcast. Thought we don't talk about age, race, religion, <laughs> no. any of that type of stuff up in here. Uh, we're going to talk about all of it except the religion part. We won't get into that. That will just not be good. But uh, no, man, happy birthday. I mean, it is belated. I, I talked, you know, I sent you the uh, text that night and talked to you the next day. Uh, but yeah, in case anybody missed it, Mr. West Briscoe had a birthday and it looked like you had a blast. Oh, man, it was cool. Um, Mr. Gray and Stephanie surprised me with uh, Gray took me out to uh, dinner or to lunch and uh i'm sitting there at lunch and he's like i got a birthday present for you you're gonna close your eyes i'm like dude i'm not closing my eyes like come on now like i know I'm, that trick i'm a grown-ass man like come on now like, I'm like, for that one again like please just close my eyes i close my eyes and my beautiful girlfriend stephanie appears like right now she's living in miami and i live in orlando it's like three and a half hours away so it was kind of a surprise and i thought she had to work and she kind of tricked me and surprised me so then we had a beautiful thai lunch and then we all got together and we went to kobe japanese steakhouse with all my friends we literally had the whole booth rented out and it was wild that's what's up it was so wild that or either that or I'm getting so old that I went home afterwards. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, we're, oh, we're getting oh, old. Oh, the leftovers were the best. best. <laughs> I took my leftovers. I, I ate mine for three meals. Yeah, Steph <laughs> took mine. I don't know how that happened. but <laughs> the Total work. They totally worked you, Wes, for your birthday. Yeah, for my birthday. <laughs> oh, you got worked on your birthday. That's great. And guess what? What? So... One of my best friends, one of like, one of my best friends, one of like the guys that I've known since I can't tell you how long, like his parents used to drop him off at my house and I used to teach him how to 98. 98 oh, damn. His parents used to drop him off at my house when I just turned like we got out of school 18 early on and when I was a professional wakeboarder and he would come over and we, I would kind of teach him and we'd wakeboard, we'd gamble on Judge Mathis, just, you know, typical teenager stuff, you know. Did you say gamble on Judge Mathis? That's the best. Yeah. <laughs> we had a stack of woods that we would just gamble on the court cases. <laughs> Yeah, oh. it came on every day at three o'clock. <laughs> we didn't have cable; we just had the Fox here, so we knew exactly when it came in, and we were like, "We hustling good math is like, you know." And like the best part is, one day he pulled out his alligator skins on like the desk and stuff. Like, oh, oh yes, whatever. I've seen a lot of Judge Mathis. 
I used to wait. How do you think I got these chains, boy? <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, for my birthday, he got me a custom made seven O gun made from clever. And we're going to go surf some big waves in Puerto Rico. We're going to go challenge the, speaking of the guy that got me my best birthday present in the world. Mr. Oh, there you go. Uh, hey, what's your Instagram? Tell him to follow you. Ask Hollywood. T you're, not, you're not in the screen. Oh, what's up? <laughs> All right. It's hard to be in your screen. You're such a big guy. <laughs> All right. well, there we go. What's your Instagram? So at you Hollywood. And your Facebook. Uh, at Danny Thollander. <laughs> yeah, what's up? Yeah, so we're going big wave surfing in Puerto Rico. We got this guy an 8 0. Yeah. I got a 7 0. Yeah. I got myself a 6 6. These are guns. Like, I got a semi gun. He's got the real gun. And the waves are actually forecasting into like 12 to 14 foot already the day we get there. No. Um, we're kind of like, wait, we, we got this long range forecast that we're watching. And. I can't wait. Can't wait. We'll all have we'll video vlog the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So, so it'll be we're fun. teach this guy how to hold his breath. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I cannot wait to see that vlog. That'll be dope, man. You know what? Next year I'm gonna fly down for your birthday so I can hang out with everybody. For yeah, sure. Next year hopefully we'll be we'll be doing a big. Yeah, man. That's gonna be dope. Uh so yeah. I mean, I think that uh, I don't have much else to talk about. We were going to just talk about that tonight because that was, uh, again, it was big stuff going on. And we were kind of throwing some wrestling. Um, I'll tell you what. Here's here's the, what uh, the big talk of the actual wrestling that uh, that's gone on in the last week was obviously AEW yeah. had a Revolution pay per view, their first mm-hmm. like big pay per view that had like actual good TV time to lead in to build storylines for this pay-per-view. Um, it, it was probably one of the best shows in the year, last year. Uh, like f- From start to end, uh, the matches were phenomenal. Uh, Young Bucks versus Kenny so what, Omega. What, what, so get to the nitty-gritty. What are you going to... You say, what's the biggest talk? You just can go over matches. What happened? What was, what was, what was the highlight? Give me... I know that... In the women's division, uh, the title changed. Yeah, yeah. Nyla Rose is now. Nyla um, Rose, congratulations to her. I'm glad that uh, she won the title. Congratulations to her. Um, your uh, your your boy had his debut AEW match on it. Swagger, huh? Jake Hagar had his very first match against Dustin Runnels. It was interesting too, man, because. Uh, we haven't had much because he's been the quiet guy and all the stuff leading into this with Jericho. So his wife was actually ringside during the match and was like kind of part of it. Like when he came to the ring, they were, they were going at it. Like it kind of got gross for a second for how much they were tonguing each other ringside before he went. Into the ring. Uh, but yeah, man, your, your boy looked good. Jake was looking real good in the ring. I mean, his wife. Was great match. His wife was there. Yeah. Yeah. Me and, me and his wife were really good friends. She actually was at FCW right when I got signed. Nice. And, yeah. Uh, she really helped me out a lot. And I got to say a big ups to her. Like, she's a great girl. Yeah, very cool. So it, it looks like she's going to kind of get involved a little bit with AEW since she was part she of it. She can wrestle. She's actually a good wrestler. Hell yeah, man. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool to see him in the ring again. It's been a while. Yeah, right. And then uh, Chris Jericho is no longer their their champion. That was a huge surprise too. Who did he lose to? John Moxley. Yeah, but they're gonna have to drop it again to a heel because for Cody to face John Moxley, that's not gonna. I don't think sell tickets because they're not gonna to put two baby faces together, and eventually Cody needs to get the title. So he's. I see in the future. Moxley, whoever Moxley drops the title to next will be who feuds with Cody in the next big people. Yeah, I think it'll be Pac. I think that's who's going to be their next big heel title guy. Um, yeah, it'll be, so Pac will be will be um, Ambrose, and then Pac and Cody will will fight for the title, and then Cody will get the title. Yeah, I, I think so, too. So uh, WrestleMania is one month away. 
Are you going, by the way? It's in Tampa. It's right in your right in your area there. Yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna be oh, you Mania, the biggest show in the world. Um I don't know. Okay. Uh, it, it all depends on the old man. The old man's the one that has the tickets. The old man's the one that controls me. If he says, be there, son, I'll be there. If he doesn't, I don't really care to sit and watch eight hours of wrestling. I know, right? <laughs> the longest show of the year. Uh, yeah, yeah. I always play the fun game of how many times I see Wes on the Hall of Fame when it's WrestleMania weekend. Yeah, I usually I'll probably at the Hall of Fame. I'm always on because I gotta get my TV time. I know at WrestleMania I won't get no TV time, but I know at the Hall of Fame I'll get some TV time. I'll at least be show like once or twice. So at least you know come up, you know, a few like new followers here and there, you know, trying to help out the show. What we can do. I take but, a shot every time I see you on it. It's my game. Yeah, but <laughs> you know, I mainly go just for the experience of hanging out with my dad. It's yeah, kind of sure. Cool experience of just it's like me and my dad's thing and it used to be really fun and we used to actually go and well i can't say nothing i've gone too far but it's a it's a thing that me and my dad really enjoy and we really really cherish like you know how they say putting smiles on people's faces like mm -hmm. every time me and my dad go we have a blast that's awesome I mean, we I've been to every single one since 25 and like in a row and except for when I was hired with TNA. Right. Right. But other than that, it's just, it's just me and my dad's thing and we bond over it. We get to see friends. We get to just, it's a good, it's a good experience and it's a really good time. And I hope everyone gets to experience WrestleMania once or twice because it's definitely something that's really fun and really special. And mm -hmm. the only thing that I disagree on is how long it is. Yeah, yeah. They're they're talking making it two days. Did you hear about that? No, oh, I mean the citizen a cit uh senior citizens pass for that one. <laughs> right. Uh you know what's funny is because I think it's what WrestleMania, it's like 36 or 37. I think it's 36 this year. Maybe 37. I can't even keep track. What's funny is in 32, WrestleMania 32 in Dallas, Texas, where me and you ran into each other at Wale Mania and you tried to sneak me into the VIP area and the dude would not let me in. Dude was like, no. You're like, no, he's fine. No, he's not. It's like, hey, yeah, I get yeah. it. Um, so how about this? Before I was, I was, I was, no, no, what You were trying to get me into the DJ booth in the VIP oh, area. I, that, I, I was already in there. Yeah. I think I think it was because there was only a certain amount of people that could be on stage. Yeah, but it was hilarious because that guy was just like, "Nope," and you're like, "No," but I'm with them. He's like, "I don't care. You can." He's not going. I I'm just like, well, I'm sorry, big guys, but I'm gonna go back on stage with Wale Radio. Right. Uh, so let's do this to end the show. I'll throw you just a couple things uh, from WWE just to get your opinion, let, let our uh, listeners and, and, and viewers know what you think of these things. These are things that are getting talked about right now. So they're talking AJ Styles, Undertaker, WrestleMania. What do you think? I think honest opinion are what I hope that's going to happen. Do you think if that happens, which they're teasing it, he came out at Super Show and went eye to eye with AJ. Would that be a good enough match that Undertaker could ride off into the sunset finally? And I think that's what he's looking for. And I think AJ is the man to do it. And I think so too. Perfect. So I'm going to give Wes Briscoe gives a thumbs up for that one. Perfect. John Cena and the Fiend Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. First of all, why did they have him lose to Goldberg? That was the most stupid thing they could ever do in my life. And that's the reason why I do not watch wrestling. It's because you're trying to build this young superstar. You're trying to build someone that's, let's say, it's not even a young superstar. He's already been on the roster for over 10 years. You're trying to make someone that can carry the back of the company, someone that's going to draw when Goldberg's dead. Yeah. And you know, bury him. And then now you throw him against Cena for WrestleMania and you wonder what's going to happen. Um, I'm guessing Cena is going to go over. And if Cena goes over, 
the company's doomed because you just kill, killed your top selling merchandise guy. You killed one of the guys that actually the fans care about, one of the guys that the internet actually agrees with, one of the guys that the internet marks, the internet trolls, actually like watching his stuff. So I give that a thumbs down, unless, unless Bray wins. If he wins, I give him a thumbs up, but if Cena comes out on top, I, I think, watching. and I, I think, watching. why would you, I would, and almost make it, it, it. I'm so mad that I don't even want to watch. <laughs> well, I do think Bray is going to win. I think Cena's at the point where he's not there to win; he's there to put him over. Uh, I, hope so. I, I just, I don't. Uh, he, the whole, thing, yeah, because the whole thing started with John saying he wasn't gonna be at Mania. And then the fiend challenges him, and that's why he's there. He's gonna be a mania. Come on now, Cena's not missed that payday. I know. Uh, the other thing I was gonna ask you about, which you already kind of hit in that last thing, is what did you feel about Goldberg winning the championship? Because no one is happy. It's uh, just. Uh, I-, I love Goldberg. I'm friends with him. I'm actually cool with him. I've actually took some vitamins with him, hung out with him. <laughs> you know, he's a good dude. Like. But I think you should be smarter and actually make some people. And what's good for business, that's what's good for your wallet. Yeah. That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. He has a family to feed, which I don't knock his hustle, and I don't hate on anybody. But that's just my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, Real quick, we'll touch on just because friend of the show beth phoenix was on monday night raw was the end of monday night raw came to give that update on edge's health status edge and Arden have this phenomenal thing going on since that rumble when edge came back uh and then the next night on monday night raw orton took him out uh beth taking that rko to end raw kind of put the audience in shock we wouldn't expect less out of that storyline when you have Orton in there but that's that's really leading into what's going to be an amazing a match between Edge and Orton at Mania, and as well as it now looks like Beth will he be teaming with Natalia to go for the tag championships at uh, that will actually make me want to watch again. See yeah. both of those back in the ring because both of those people can work really well and they both can tell a great story and they both can tell the boss, Hey, we actually want to make somebody, we don't want to just smash somebody, right? Yeah. I agree, and I, I'm excited for that. And they're doing really good with that story. It's the best thing going on Raw right now is that whole thing. And then to end the show, Eric Rowan. This is the last thing we're going to talk about for us late. Eric Rowan, he's been walking around with this cage covered by this uh, sack. Oh, we finally showed what's in it. We finally got the reveal this Monday night. Wes, you're going you're gonna to go nuts on that. You're going to just hate how they did it. First of all, it didn't even happen in the ring or in front of the audience. It was a backstage segment. It was no way Jose and his party line dancing in the hallway. He stops and sees Rowan and says, hey, big fella, can we just please see what's in your cage? And Rowan then looks at him and says, I've just been waiting for someone to ask nicely to see what's in the cage. You want to see it? And he pulls out a giant, like one of those ones you get at the Halloween store that pops up right before Halloween, those giant like fake tarantulas that you can like use a remote with. And it'll like scoot around, like just overly fake spider. And then that was the end of it. That was the end of that segment in reveal. So, like two, three months, oh, what was going to be in this thing? You make. Oh, <laughs> it definitely was the lowest point. Uh, and this is how we're going to end our show. Yeah, it was. Well, what, I mean, that's yeah, it's the last. Wah, thing. Wah, 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 wah. Well, it's uh, it's yeah, it, it, in true fashion of WWE, you know, you have something awesome going on like Orton and Beth Phoenix killing a, doing a killer promo at the end of the night, but earlier you have just that piece of garbage. So, oh uh, man, yeah. he's got the forecast. It's going to be over ten foot. Ooh, I definitely want some video to see this because I'm afraid to go on the little waves you showed me when I was down there. So ten foot, I couldn't imagine. Uh, what that would be like for myself, but do right, let's uh close this bad boy out. Yeah, yeah. What uh, what do you got coming? What's the dates, man? Where are you at? Where can people find you on the road? Uh, video volume, big Puerto Rico with my boy, Mr. Dollywood. Any shows coming up? I'm going on vacation to Puerto Rico. 
Nice. So then uh, when you get back, we'll do another. Uh, that's next week, right? Um, We'll do one more show before I leave. Okay. So we'll do one more show before you leave. And then we'll get the, the recap after that of how good that trip was. But yeah, man. I, I got- do want to there, but, but it won't be over wrestling because a, there's no way in hell I'm going to watch wrestling on a surf trip. Yeah, right. I don't blame I don't you. Watch it now, let alone watch it on a surf trip. <laughs> right. I don't blame you. So we, can talk, we can talk about what's going on and we can talk about what the video vlogs that we're about to put out in the content. Yeah, for sure. Or or we can just bring a guest. Oh, we didn't get to talk about Teddy Hart going to jail. We got oh. so much. Oh. Okay, so we do have some stuff on the back burner to bring up. Plus, All right, come on. we we're gonna we're gonna do an episode next week, early in the week, and get that one out before I leave to Puerto Rico. Yeah, and then we also are gonna bring a couple. Well, of- we have a guest. What's I have a guest on that one before I leave to Puerto Rico? Sounds good, man. We're going to do that. Watch the social medias uh, at Briscoe and Big A Show on Twitter, Bis- Briscoe and Big A Show on Facebook. So I got to go into where is it at? It was just here. Oh, here it is. I got to go into my little black book and find a guest. This black book, if it could talk, <laughs> if it could talk. Uh, we probably would not want to hear any stories of it, but I have some numbers and some contacts of some very famous people. Nice. Yeah. D- and I know maybe we'll drop a hint online if you're following us on social media when when we have um, that solid uh, for next week. But yeah, keep uh, keep tuned to the social media to know when the next episode's coming out exactly. We'll throw that link up day of so you could join us that night live. Uh, my only other thing I have going on Tuesday night, check out me on the Mass Comedian X cast with my friend, the Mass Comedian, where we talk super nerdy wrestling. So it's completely opposite from this. If you need your Mark, re- Mark fix, because I know that's why you and I don't do that on this show. You and I just kick it. But I still have to get the nerd side of wrestling out of me, and I do it on that show. So um, you can check us out Tuesday nights live on YouTube, and then just keep following up because we got some big things coming, some big guests coming. And Wes is going to have a really cool vlog coming of some monster waves. It's going to be sick. All right, guys. Again, follow us on social media. Subscribe, uh, like, follow, comment, share it with your friends, review it. All that stuff helps us get out to the more uh, fans that can uh, share the greatness that uh, is the Wes Briscoe and Big A show. So we will see you guys next week, everybody.